please make sure that you're performing any synthetic or load tests against a website you have control over. I'm using commit quality because this is mine, but please don't use this one because it won't handle the load. Make sure you have authorization for whatever you're testing when you're looking to perform this kind of load and performance testing. Thank you and enjoy the video. This is Jared from commit quality. In today's video, we're going to go over using our playwright test TypeScript tests with artillery. So in the previous video, we talked about just setting up a basic JavaScript playwright test and using that in artillery. Typically, most people are using playwright test with TypeScript for the type safety and everything else. So I thought this would be a really good video to show how you can do it. I'm using the exact same code as I did for the JavaScript video. However, I've changed the login function to be a TypeScript function. We were exporting the function here. And I've also changed the example spec file to be a TypeScript file. And of course, my config setup is now in TypeScript rather than JavaScript. In terms of the artillery script, that's all still the same. So let's just make sure if I run my playwright test, I should still see the three tests because it's one, but we have multiple projects being run in. We have three passing, which is all great. But what I should find now is if I try to execute my artillery config file, we're going to have errors. And that's because we now have everything set up in TypeScript. And we're trying to point to a JavaScript file, which of course doesn't exist at the moment. So in the first video I touched upon, you can use your test scripts, you have your, your TypeScript tests in artillery, but we have to convert it into JavaScript. And to do that, we're going to use TSC. So I'm going to create a TS config first of all. So I'm going to say TS config dot json and that's going to be an object and i'm going to say compiler options and inside here we're going to say the target will be of es6 uh we'll say the module is common js oh of course i've missed my commas so don't miss those out uh, our output directory of where we want to output our JavaScript file. So in this case, I'm going to say it can live inside the JS tests folder. And once again, don't miss your comma. And we want to say the root directory where we want to basically convert all or transpile all of our, our TypeScript into JavaScript by saying this inside. Let's just do it inside the test folder. So it'll do everything inside tests because that's where you might be really the only thing we're going to worry about is this actual login command. If you don't already have TypeScript installed globally, you want to say npm install dash g TypeScript. All looks good there. With all that set up, we should just be able to say TSC now. And that's going to take what we need from this TS config. Ignore the error because that's just saying the pattern matching is a bit off. So that's fine. Let's just clear that down. But what you might see now is we now have this output directory of JS tests. And if we go into it, you can see we've got example spec, which technically we didn't need. But the main thing we've got now is this commands file. And look, it's a login.js file, which means we can now go back to our artillery script, which if you remember, didn't run correctly. And instead of saying commands login, we'll say Go back another one, JS tests, commands, login. And now once we're on our artillery script, this should all work completely fine, which remember is still using all of our TypeScript, TypeScript features we have, but it's transpiled them into this JS test folder. So now if we run artillery run YAML, we should see it all runs and works as expected. Here we are, phase has started and we've got all the information that we had in our JavaScript video in TypeScript. So now hopefully this shows you how you can use this with an existing test, whether they page object model or ones like this, you might need to make a few changes. The main thing is going to be inside your actual test itself. So for example, spec, it needs to have, it needs to call on the function. So you're not repeating the code basically in two places. So you don't want the code here and inside your artillery JS file here, you can just use one method to call in both. But to be honest, if you're using something like a page object model, or you're using the kind of commands approach or the, the commands or actions approach, you're probably already using things in function. And that's the only thing you're really going to need to change. And it really is as easy as that. Now, before I sign off this video, I want to kind of break down all the different metrics we have here because I'm aware we've gone through 
two ep- two episodes of this series now. And we haven't really talked about what's being output on here. So we've already touched on like the, the different metrics we see in for the different pages. So you've got to commit to quality, then you're going down to the login. So let's discuss what they are. So let's go from the top here. And we've got FCP, which is known as the first contentful paint. And this measures the time from when the page starts loading to when, when any part of the page's content is rendered on the screen. So it's basically when you hit that page and it starts loading, when is the first thing that appears on there appearing? And we can see the min, max, the mean, the medium. And and we have the P95 and the P99. So you probably already see the minimum is the minimum took, the max is the max, and you've got the mean and the medium. But what does P95 and P99 actually mean? So in this example, P95 is the 95th percentile response time. In this case, it's 237.5. This isn't obviously that great because we're only using one V user, but when we start going through phases and ramping up, you're going to see that this all changes and your min and max and your P95 and 99 will be different. You'll probably end up seeing these two are still the same because I'm not going to do a huge amount, huge amount of difference on it. So this P95, just to clarify, is the value below which 95% of the response times fall. And like the P95 and the P99 are useful identifying outliers or requests with kind of unusually high response times. These metrics are really valuable for kind of understanding the overall performance characteristics of your system. And it can identify any bottlenecks or areas for improvement. They're going to help you gauge how responsive your application is under different load conditions, which is what we're going to see when we start going through phases. Now you can see all these others like the FID LCB have these as well so it basically means the same for all of these now then let's go over the next one we can see which is the FID which is the first input delay and that measures the time from when a user first interacts with your site so when they say click on a link tap on a button or use any kind of custom JavaScript powered control to the time then when the browser is actually able to respond to that interaction next we have the LCP which is known as the large largest contentful paint and this this just measures the time from when the page starts loading to when the largest text block or image element is rendered on the screen unlike first contentful is just picking the first thing this is looking for the largest thing on your page next we have is ttfb which is the time to first byte and this measures the time it takes for the network to respond to a user request with the first byte of a resource Okay, so I think that's covered. We've covered FCP. We've covered uh, FID, so first input delay. Covered uh, largest contentful paint. We've just done the time to first byte. And that looks like it's everything that's displayed on here at the moment. I do want to touch on the documentation for a second because this is just the default metrics. So this is the web vital metrics that are displayed for our URL. However, you can also include show all page metrics and extended metrics. And what extended metrics is going to do is um, allow additional metrics to be output. I won't go through that here because this is just a very basic example of setting up TypeScript and I just want to cover this a little bit. But if you did want to see the extended metrics, you can add this into your artillery config, saying extended metrics to true, and it'll output a bit more information for you that you can dive into. Maybe we'll cover that off in a future video. I just wanted to cover off the response you're seeing right now, just so you understand them a bit more. And when we start going into uh, the phases, which is our next video, it's gonna make a lot more sense. This isn't the end of this series. There's another video coming out next, which is gonna go over phases and how we can like ramp up our virtual users. Because at the moment, as you've seen, if we scroll all the way down, virtual users completed was just one. That's not much of a load test. It's more of a synthetic test at this point but in the next video we're going to go over phases show you how we can increase virtual users how we can decrease them out and turn this into a proper load test it's all going to be using the typescript stuff we've got here with with the javascript that we just created here but hopefully this has made it really easy and simple of how you can make a start on your synthetic and load testing journey with artillery and playwright test in typescript as always any comments, please drop them down below. A like and subscribe is appreciated. I have also enabled super thanks. If you do want to contribute to these videos, that would be fantastic and you can use that. As always, thank you for watching and have a great day.